Welcome to our autumn tour. We had a wonderful night at Dancy's Pass Holiday Park. After leaving Dancy's, we connected with Mount Keeburn track about halfway through Dancy's Pass. What an absolute surprise! At the end of the day, we camped below the Hawkstone Range. Then the next morning, we head to Falls Dam. On the way back, we explore Fiddler's Flat. And then we travel through Ida Valley, on our way to the Upper Manaburn Reservoir, where we stay the night. My name is Marcus Wyatt. Join me as I share my passion for four-wheel drives and traveling to the remotest parts of New Zealand. If you enjoy these videos, please support me by buying me a coffee on Patreon. Join the Explore Track New Zealand team now. Mount Keeburn Track, one of the most scenic tracks I've done so far. It's a brilliant high altitude track that skirts the north side of Mount Keeburn. Generally, this is a solid grade three track with the fording of Timber Creek being only around one to one and a half feet deep and fairly straightforward. Though the track is not possible in heavy rain and heavy snow melt when the Timber Creek is running high and unfordable. The track provides amazing views down onto Timber Creek as well as a panoramic view of the Kakanui, Rock and Pillar and Ida Ranges. The Keyburn can be accessed from either Mount Buster or Dancy's Pass Road. From Buster Diggings at 1200 meters, the track follows the ridge below the 1560 meter summit of Mount Keyburn at which point it becomes narrow and exposed and drops st steeply down to Dancy's Pass Road. Mount Keyburn Track is an excellent option as a connecting route from Mount Buster Track to Dancy's Pass. Please note, tracks in the Otiaki Conservation Park including Mount Keyburn Track are open to vehicles between Labor Weekend and 30th of April. It was also time to give the new generation their chance to enjoy off-road driving. Since Ida Hut was full, I decided to push through to an area I've camped before. Just after you descend the Hawkstone Range close to the Johnston's Creek, there's a level, flat area that makes for great camping spot. The next morning was frosty. It must have been below zero that night. After we pack up camp, we made our way towards Falls Dam. Falls Dam is a rock-filled dam built to supply water for irrigation, completed in 1935. The decision was made to build a gravity dam in 1931 when there was a need to engage as many unemployed men as possible. Excavation of the diversion tunnel was started in 1931, at the same time as the stripping of the dam area. The quarrying and placing of rock to the edges of the river was being carried out. Work then proceeded on placing the rock in the dam, building a cut-off wall and installing the concrete face on the upstream wall. A circular concrete spillway was constructed and a vertical shaft provided to connect it with the diversion tunnel below. The final operation consisted of sealing the upstream end of the three-foot pipe under the dam. The workers accommodation provided consisted of an 8 foot by 10 foot tent for two men and limited number of rent free married quarters consisting of two tents joined by a porch. There is still a few chimneys remaining at the site from the workers huts. It's a nice little dam. Unfortunately there's a there's actually a track that goes through but the gate's locked. Um, I think there's access problems with the farmer um, that owns the station down there. It would have been awesome to cross over and then access the river at the bottom, but it's also locked, so you can't do that. Um, really spectacular place. Now we are off to explore Fiddler's Flat Conservation Area. 
I was really surprised by Fiddler's Flat conservation area. Are you almost as tall? There are a couple of tracks taking you down to the Maneorikia River edge where you could possibly fish and have a swim. The river does flow strong in certain areas, so pick your spot wisely. There's quite a few tracks in the area with challenging bits thrown in. Made for quite an enjoyable morning exploring the area. This is a great little find, um, conservation area. So you can camp here, unfortunately no fires, but um, great man. Beautiful campsites next to the river. Definitely gonna use this at some point. Next, we are off to the Upper Manaburn Reservoir, driving through the Ida Valley. We left the gravel highway behind and hit the dirt track, weaving up to the top of the plateau where we stopped for a look around. It's dry and barren as far as the eye can see, with little in the way of plant life except for a splash of yellow through a gully where a flowing stream is keeping the willows alive. 20 kilometers later we spied a small grove of greenery ahead of us, a few fishing huts and a sign indicating we finally reached our destination. Although we couldn't see the dam and didn't know whether to take the left or right turn. We took the left turn and made our way over a rather rough patch of track and then rounded the bend to find the dam wall right ahead in front of us. The upper Manaburn Dam is not to be confused with the lower Manaburn Dam. Both are sometimes referred to as the Manaburn Dam, but there is quite a few rugged kilometers separating them. The more well-known lower dam is just outside Alexandra and is often used for ice skating in the winter. I love the fishing huts we are finding on our travels. They have so much character and the best possible views. We decided to go down to the river below the dam wall where we saw a flat spot which will protect us from the wind. So, ran out of drinking water, the uh, 50 litre tank. <laughs> we went through that quite, a, quite, a, quite quickly, me and the two boys. So, quick re refill, um, get the tank. I'm sure this river is pretty clean. Gets all its water up from the Otago High Country. Couldn't be cleaner, I reckon. Anyway, so we will uh, fill up the water tank and um, we'll have uh, 50 litres of water, drink, drinking water again. Also, gonna have a quick shower. This brings us to the end of this episode. Tune in next week for more adventures.